the far north. It's quite overpowering. Vast expanses, silent fjords, fairy tale mountains. It's just fabulously beautiful. The land of the magical northern lights is somewhere I've longed for all my life. It is quite incredibly cold. Well, I suppose it's Arctic. I think that's what you could call it. As a little girl, I lived in the steamy heat of tropical Malaysia. And wonderful as it was, I used to yearn to be cold. Putting on a cardigan was a huge treat. I'd never even seen snow. But my storybooks were full of snow queens and trolls. And now I'm entering that world. It's fantastic. We're so far north. Can we get further north? I think so. This is the journey I've always dreamt of making. I feel I've come into another world now. No people, except you and us. And if we're very lucky, we might see the elusive Northern Lights themselves. My Arctic Odyssey begins one chill dawn in early March. I'm already 900 miles north of my home in London. Is this us? An eight-hour journey lies ahead to get to the Arctic Circle. And I'm heading there on Norway's real-life Polar Express. Yeah, it's the snow blowing in as I look out. They say don't stick your head out of the window. One of the most exciting things about going on a trip is packing. And this lovely old suitcase, um, which came from my childhood, all our luggage in those days was marked in the same way. Mum used to stencil Lumley on it like this and paint the corners red so that we could see them when they were stored up on the quayside, ready to go on board ship, because you never flew in those days. And so I pack up things that are going to be essential on every trip. So in here I've got, for instance, oil-based pastels, and I've got the lovely little drawing book, but I've got that coloured pages so that you can draw in different colours. These I got here, milk accrued, I think they're nice chocolates. A lovely old guidebook, it's called The Land of the Vikings. It's got beautiful old maps. Look at that. But if it wasn't for one item in my case, I wouldn't be on this journey at all. This is the book, Polly the Penguin. This is when I first heard of the Northern Lights. I was a little child in Malaya. I was six or seven years old, and I was given this book. It's written by an Australian, Veronica Bassa. So, in fact, the lights that she was talking about were the Aurora Australis rather than Aurora Borealis. And there was this picture which haunted me of a sort of rippling curtain and a little tiny penguin. Anyway, there's Pony. Suddenly, the sky was lit up by long, searching fingers of pale primrose light which traced patterns across its inky blackness. That stayed with me forever and ever, and I just couldn't believe that I'd get up to growing up and leaving school and getting married and having a job and getting on and getting granddaughters and still not have seen what Pony the Penguin saw. So this is a lifelong ambition, and my only dread is that we won't get to see them. To give myself every chance, I'm going to travel ever northwards, spending my nights staring up with hope at the dark sky and filling my days with as wide a range of experiences of Norway's far north as possible. This is going to be the furthest north not only I've ever got, but I think towards the end of it, about as far as you can get without actually being ran off fines and walking to the North Pole and looking at this extraordinary backbone of Norway, which is like a huge sort of spinal cord. It goes up like that and loops around, and we're about there and travelling on up. 
but it's just, it's just thrilling. And always the pull of the magnetic north, the most senior point on the compass. And in fact, what I love is always knowing where the north is. I think this is important. Wherever you are in the world, you must know where the north, south, east, and west are. Otherwise, you're just feeling foolish. And at the moment, I am heading and traveling to north. I could just clatter across the Arctic Circle on the train. But actually, I'm going to do it in real style. This is, after all, the realization of a lifelong dream. This is not your average taxi rank at the station. I'm in the hands of Tora Christensen and his team of 11 sled dogs. Good morning, I'm Joanna. Tora, how nice to see you, Tora. These are wonderful dogs. <laughs> what kind are they? Alaskan, Alaskan huskies. Alaskan huskies? Yes. So they like to... to uh... They like to run? Uh, yes. been the most extraordinary journey of my life, hissing along in this beautiful little sled with Tora shouting instructions to these 11 fine huskies. They don't like stopping and standing still, they're having a rest of the moment. They don't like that, they just want to be on the journey. When we're running over virgin snow, their footprints are blue, pale blue. It's the most extraordinary way to cross the Arctic Circle, but of course I haven't crossed it yet. Yep. The Arctic Circle, like the equator, is an imaginary line and runs right around the roof of the world. It marks the point at which you're so far north that on one day a year, the winter solstice, the sun never rises, while at the height of summer, it never sets. But as well as being imaginary, the trouble with the Arctic Circle is that because the Earth shifts slightly on its axis, it has a habit of moving. I need to find 66 degrees 33.706 north, the precise latitude for the Arctic Circle this very day, as supplied to me by the Greenwich Royal Observatory. Bearing due north, I hope orbiting satellites will tell my fancy sat-nav GPS machine precisely when I hit the right spot. Seven oh three, seven oh four, seven oh five, seven oh five. I could put this down here. Stay, stuff. There, there. Stay, stuff. There. Arctic Circle. Seven seven oh sixty six thirty three seven oh five. 7.06. I've walked into the Arctic Circle. That's just, um, that's just the ordinary world. And this is the Arctic Circle. And that is due north. Oh, I think this is quite incredible. That's due north. Excellent job, dogs. Yep. I'm in the Arctic now. And for the rest of my journey north, I can obviously call myself an explorer, not a tourist.
It's time to stop hurtling around and give myself a chance to stand and stare. I've chosen a region renowned for some of Scandinavia's finest scenery and richest fishing waters, the Lufoten Islands. But I'm drawn mainly by the charm of a name on the map. It's not A, but O. And it's not the first, but the last letter of the Norwegian alphabet. Arriving by night, O certainly feels like the back of beyond and cloud cover rules out any prospect of seeing the northern lights. Oh, this is right.